Hey everyone, welcome back to art class. It's Miss Mitchell. So for this week, I am going to be the one who is guiding you through your art lesson for the week. Uh, the asynchronous team had a different art lesson planned for you guys, but at school at Caldwell, we are actually celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. And I wanted to do a project with you guys that specifically celebrated Hispanic Heritage Month. So we are going to take a look at an artist from El Salvador and do a little activity based around that. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, this week we are looking at an artist named Fernando Yort. He was born in 1949 and he's from El Salvador, which is this teeny tiny country right here in red. I know that's really hard to see, but it is right there. And this is a picture of him on the right. So Fernando Yort had a passion for art since he was a little boy. He made drawings on the back of his school notebooks and he took every opportunity that he had to learn from different artists out there. So he wanted to learn as much art as he could and he drew as much as he could. And after many twists and turns in life at the age of 23, he decided to leave his parents' home and he moved to a little town in the northern mountains of El Salvador called La Palma with a very clear dream in his mind, which was to start a cultural movement and make art a way of living for him and others. So art was something that he really loved and he had a passion for that and he wanted to spread and share that passion with others and be able to make a living doing art. So Fernando would start teaching the people from the town to draw and paint. An artisan movement was born and La Palma went from being a mainly agricultural town, that means where they farm and grow lots of crops, to one driven by art. And you can see all these pictures here of all of the art that has um, been made in La Palma. It's uh, decorating a lot of buildings there makes this city very colorful. His art is influenced by the Mayan culture. So on the picture to your left right here, this is just an example of art from the Mayan culture. It's a, an ancient civilization um, from Central America. And on the right, you can see Fernando's artwork right here. So it is kind of similar in style to what you see on the left. He has a gallery in San Salvador that is filled with his art. So a gallery is a place where a lot, a lot of artwork is put on display for people to see. You can walk around it and just look at all of the artwork that an artist or a group of artists has made. So here are just some close-ups of some of his artwork. You can see again, it's very, very colorful and it's inspired by what you might see in El Salvador. Lots of the agricultural plant elements. And here is just another slide with some more of his artwork. Again, you can see some buildings that you might find in El Salvador. Uh, some different kinds of animals and imagery. Uh, he even did a mural. A mural is just a really large painting on the side of a wall. And so we are looking at Fernando Yort, who, like I said, is an artist from El Salvador in celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month. And that goes from September 15th all the way until October 15th. So we are right in the middle of it right now. And why is Hispanic Heritage Month important? Well, it's important because we want to celebrate and learn about the history and culture of different people around the world. And so this time specifically, we are focusing on Spain, Mexico, the Caribbean, and Central and South America. And let's take a look at this artwork right here. 
We can see, once again, different imagery of things you might find in El Salvador. Uh, this right here might be an ox or a cattle. Uh, right here, if we turn it to the side, you can see there's a horse. You might find horses there. Uh, this right here would be maybe a farmer, someone who is working uh, on the land there and he's growing some crops or some plants like this. This would be corn. So let's go ahead and make some art. I'm going to put this to the side and I want you to grab a, a piece of paper or maybe a sketchbook if you have one. I have my sketchbook right here. Um, but grab any kind of paper that you have, even if it's notebook paper. And I want you to also grab a pencil. So what we are going to be drawing is the horse that we just looked at from the previous slide. Um, so you're going to follow along with me while I am drawing. That means you draw what I draw. And if I ever go too fast for you, or you miss something, you can always pause the video, or you can go back and rewind it and play it again as many times as you need to. Alright, so I have my pencil here, and I'm just going to go ahead and get started. We're going to get started with the head of the horse. So also notice my paper is... The horizontal way instead of the vertical way uh, let's turn it the horizontal way all right so the head going back to the head we're gonna start with kind of a horseshoe shape or you can say it's the shape of a U and then we're just gonna close it on this side like that I'm going to go ahead and draw a curved line that looks like this. It's connected to the head. Go down a little bit. That's for the neck. And then I'm going to curve it this way. This is for the body. And then I'm going to slowly curve it down this way. And this is for the back part of the leg. Just like that. Now I'm going to come back up here and do the other side of the neck. So this is once again connected to the head still. It's a slightly curved line like this. I'm going to go out a little bit for the curve of the front leg. And let's come down this way. This is the bottom of the, the hoof or the foot. I'm going to come up. That's the side of the front leg here, coming around here and going back down. This is the second leg, just like that. So I went to the side, up, right, down, right, and back up again. Let's keep going from here. This is the line we're going to go straight across like this. This is the, the stomach. And then we still need two more legs. So let's go ahead and draw those back legs like this. They should look pretty similar to the front legs. So we have the basic shape of our body, of our horse. We can go back and add some more details. So let's go ahead and add a tail right here. Just a curved line like that. And we can go back and add the ears. Think about the shape of maybe a football or a lemon when you're drawing the shape of the ears or maybe like a flower petal. So I drew two ears, one, two. And we're gonna draw the mane of the horse. The mane is all the hair that comes down the side of the head and the neck. So I'm going to draw a curved line like this. And it kind of goes halfway to the body. And we can just add some details inside of the mane just to show uh, that there's hair here.
And let's go ahead and add the eye. So I'm going to draw a big eye like this. And the pupil goes right inside of that. We can draw a line from the top of our head to the bottom of the head like that. And a line going this way. This is like the nose and the mouth. Now, whatever uh, details or patterns you want to draw on the body of the horse is up to you. Uh, I do like to add lines here for the hooves or the feet. Um, you can see if I go back to the image of Fernando York's horse right here, we can see, oh, let's go back this way. Uh, we can see the patterns that he uses here. Uh, I'm going to do my best to replicate that, but if you want to do a different kind of design or pattern, you are welcome to. I might change mine up just a little bit from his, actually, just to make it my own. So it's going to be, it's going to look a little different from his, but still look pretty similar. So go ahead and add whatever kinds of design or pattern you want to your horse. Make it your own. All right, I think I have finished adding my details to my horse. And the last thing that I'm going to do is color it in. And I will show you what it looks like after I finish coloring everything in.